Rasipuram Krishna Swami Ayya Narayana Swami, commonly known as R.K. Narayan, was an Indian writer known for his work set in the fictional South Indian town of Malgudi. He was a leading author of early Indian literature in English, along with Mulk Raj Anand and Raja Rao. In a career that spanned over 60 years, Narayan received many awards and honors, including the A.Z. Benson Medal from the Royal Society of Literature, Patma Vibhushan and Patma Bhushan, India's second and third highest civilian awards, and in 1994, the Sahitya Academy Fellowship, the highest honor of Indian's National Academy of Letters. He was also nominated to the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Indian Parliament. Malgudi Days is among Narayan's collection of short stories. The story is written with Narayan's simple style and characteristic. Gentle irony portray the variety and color of Indian life. Narayan in his introduction says, I have named this volume Malgudi Days in order to give it a possibly geographical status. I am often asked, where is Malgudi? All I can say is that it is imaginary and not to be found on any map. If I explain that Malgudi is a small town in South India, I shall only be expressing a half-truth. For the characteristics of Malgudi seems to me universal. Punctually at midday, he opened his bag and spread out his professional equipment, which consisted of a dozen cowdy shells, a square piece of cloth with obscure mystic charts on it, a notebook and a bundle of palmyra writing. His forehead was resplendent with sacred ash and vermilion, and his eyes sparkled with a sharp abnormal gleam, which was really an outcome of a continual search look for customers, but which his simple clients took to be a prophetic light and felt comforted. The power of his eyes was considerably enhanced by their position, placed as they were between the painted forehead and the dark whiskers which streamed down his cheeks. Even a half-wit's eyes would sparkle in such a setting. To crown the effect, he wound a saffron-colored turban around his head. This color scheme never failed. People were attracted to him as bees are attracted to cosmos or dahlia stats. He sat under the boughs of a spreading tamarind tree which flagged a path running through the town hall park. It was a remarkable place in many ways. A surging crowd was always moving up and down this narrow road morning till night. A variety of traders and occupations was represented all along its way. Medicine sellers, sellers of stolen hardware and junk, magicians, and above all, an auctioneer of cheap clothes who created enough din all day to attract the whole town. Next to him, in vociferousness, came a wonder of fried groundnuts, who gave his bear a fancy name each day, calling it Bombay ice cream one day, and on the next, Delhi almond and on the third, Raja's delicacy, and so on and so forth, and people flocked to him. A considerable portion of this crowd dallied before the astrologer too. The astrologer transacted his business by the light of a flare which crackled and smoked up about the groundnut heap nearby. Half the enhancement of the place was due to the fact that it did not have the benefit of municipal lighting. The place was lit up by the shop lights. One or two had hissing gas lights. Some had naked flyers stuck on poles. Some were lit up by old cycle lamps. And one or two, like the astrologers, managed without lights of their own. It was a bewildering crisscross of light rays and moving shadows. 
this suited the astrologer very well for the simple reason that he had not in the least intended to be an astrologer when he began life and he knew no more of what was going to happen to others than he knew what was going to happen to himself next minute he was as much a stranger to the stars as were his innocent customers yet he said things which pleased and astonished everyone that was more a matter of study practice and shrewd guesswork all the same it was as much an honest man's labor as any other and he deserved the wages he carried home at the end of a day he had left his village without any previous thought or plan if he had continued there he would have carried on the work of his forefathers namely tilling the land living marrying and ripening in his corn field and ancestral home but that was not to be he had to leave home without telling anyone and he could not rest till he left it behind a couple of hundred miles to a villager it is a great deal as if an ocean flowed between he had a working analysis of mankind's troubles marriage money and the tangles of human ties long practice had sharpened his perception within 5 minutes he understood what was wrong he charged 3 pies per question and never opened his mouth till the other had spoken for at least 10 minutes which provided him enough stuff for a dozen answers and advices when he told the person before him gazing at his palm in many ways you are not getting the fullest result for your efforts 9 out of 10 were disposed to agree with him or he questioned is there any woman in your family maybe even a distant lady who is not well disposed towards you or he gave an analysis of character most of your troubles are due to your nature how can you be otherwise with saturn where he is you have an impetuous nature and a rough exterior this entered him to their hearts immediately for even the mildest of us loves to think that he has a forbearing exterior the nut wonders blew out his flare and rose to go home this was a signal for the astrologer to bundle up too since it left him in darkness except for a little shaft of green light which strayed in from somewhere and touched the ground before him he picked up his cowdy shells and paraphernalia and was putting them back into his bag when the green shaft of light was blotted out he looked up and saw a man standing before him he sensed a possible client and said you look so careworn it will do you good to sit down for a while and chat with me the other grumbled some vague reply the astrologer pressed his invitation whereupon the other thrust his palm under his nose saying you call yourself an astrologer the astrologer felt challenged and said tilting the other's palm towards the green shaft of light yours is the nature who oh, stopped that the other said tell me something worthwhile our friend felt piqued i charge only 3 pies per question and what you get all to be good enough for your money and this the other withdrew his arms took out an anna and flung it out to him saying i have some questions to ask if i prove you are bluffing you must return that honor to me with interest if you find my answers satisfactory will you give me 5 rupees no or will you give me 8 annas all right provide you give me twice as much if you are wrong said the stranger this pact was accepted after a little further argument the astrologer sent up a prayer to heaven as the other lit a chulud the astrologer caught a glimpse of his face by the match light there was a pause as cars hooted on the road jutka drivers swore at their horses 
and the babble of the crowd agitated the semi-darkness of the park. The other sat down, sucking his chult, puffing out, sat there ruthlessly. The astrologer felt very uncomfortable. Here, take your honor back. I am not used to such challenges. It is late for me today. He made preparation to bundle up. The other held his wrist and said, You can't get out of it now. You dragged me in while I was passing. The astrologer shivered in his grip, and his voice shook and became faint. Leave me today. I will speak to you tomorrow. The other thrust his palm in his face and said, Challenge is challenge. Go on. The astrologer proceeded with his thought dried up. There is a woman.